What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. And you can find my written work and my running back rankings for Devi Leagues, Dynasty Leagues, and this current rookie class over at NoahMoreParties.com. And the NFL Draft is, what, tomorrow? This video comes out on Wednesday. The NFL Draft is this Thursday. And so I have, two, I, have, I have two important things for you today. Number one is a recommendation to check out the BDGE Rookie Draft Guide. It has all of my running back data for the guys in this class. I did a large portion of the wide receiver and tight end evaluations in the Rookie Draft Guide. It's just a really good resource for familiarizing yourself with pretty much every skill position player in this class. And then with the NFL draft happening this weekend, you're going to get updated information about with, you know, with landing spots and draft capital in order to kind of attack your rookie drafts accordingly. Go check that out. And the second thing for you is today's video is my final pre-draft rookie running back rankings. I need receipts that I can, I can look back on when I get everything right in this class. You would need receipts for these takes if any of them were going to be wrong, but I think they're all correct. So today we are leveraging the power of technology in order to give you my final pre-draft rookie running back rankings and tiers. We have tier maker. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. We're going to switch. Boom. Tier maker. Look at this. I'm in the middle of the screen in my chair inside tier maker. Let's get into it. We're going to start at the top, and the top guy in this running back class is Bijan Robinson, and so I'm going to I'm going to pick him up. I'm going to pick him up and I'm going to drag him over here to tier number 1. We all know the deal with Bijan Robinson. He is he's got workhorse size. He's got near elite athleticism. He is a a special mover uh laterally on top of being a big dude who can break a lot of tackles so he can run with run with finesse, run with power. He can also, you know, attack defenses downfield as a receiver. He's one of the few guys, maybe maybe the only guy in this class with like a, a, a true, complete skill set. And he has special traits on top of it that give him access to like an elite fantasy ceiling. He's clearly the top guy in this class. The next tier, I have two guys in there. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go in alphabetical order because these are, these are tiers. Uh, and so that's Devon A-Chain and Jameer Gibbs. In tier number two, and I view these guys fairly similarly, given that they're both undersized, super athletic, super dynamic out in space. Um, I think both of them probably best suited to outside zone running schemes. Um, both of them had been been linked to the Miami Dolphins. I would I would love that landing spot for either of them. I think the difference between the two of them for me is Gibbs is much better as a receiver. He has that Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara versatility, nuanced ability to run routes and beat defenders in like man-to-man -man coverage, as well as being really slippery, just, just really nice out in space, in the open field, out in the flats, things like that, able to make defenders miss, erase angles. Um, set defenders up for poor angles with his with like the way he he uses hesitation moves and uh, you know varying his pacing while he runs. So that's Gibbs. That, that's that's his strength. A chain is a fine receiver. He can he can catch passes you know out in the flat, swing passes, screens. He's tough to guard on wheel routes just because he's so fast and he has good hands. Uh, but he doesn't do a lot of the other like over the middle type stuff that that Gibbs does. You know beating linebackers and and slot corners over the middle of the field. But he's much better as a traditional runner. And so both of these guys have like size and workload concerns. Not necessarily concerns that that I have with their ability to handle workloads. But we don't know what the NFL is going to give them. But both of them are like super dynamic and come at having high ceilings in fantasy from kind of two different angles, but arrive in similar places for me. Nonetheless, this, this next tier is a one man tier. Uh, this is probably, you know, maybe other than a chain, probably my favorite running back in this class, Zach Evans. And I just think he, he's such a good like runner of the football. He's 5'11", 208, ran a four, five at his, at his pro day, ran the fastest. What was it? Three cone. I don't remember if it was the three cone to the short shuttle. I believe it was a three cone, ran the fastest three cone of any running back in this class. So he, he's got nice lateral agility for a guy who runs big, you know, regardless of what he weighs, he's super powerful, runs with a lot of ferocity. It, it, it's kind of a quiet ferocity. Like he almost looks disinterested at times, but dudes are just bouncing off of him all over the place. Um, he's like, you know, spear dudes in the chest on his on his way to the open field but he's a big play runner who breaks a lot of tackles 
and is explosive. There are questions about his ability to stay healthy, which I think are legitimate. Questions about his ability to contribute in the passing game, which, you know, I, I think he has potential there. He's got some focus drop issues, but I think he's he's capable of being a fine receiver. And he's a guy who who is kind of frogger on these tiers for me. Like I could see him jumping a tier up. I could also see him jumping a couple tiers back. Like he can move up and down this list quite a bit, but just based on his talent, which is largely what these pre-draft rankings are based on, Evans is, is right there with the top guys for me. And this next tier is a group that I could see Evans falling in line with a little bit, but that is Roshan Johnson and Zach Charbonnet. We're doing alphabetical order. There we go. Zach Charbonnet, Roshan Johnson. And I view these two guys pretty similarly. They're both like six feet tall, right around 200 pounds, mid four, five speed for both of them. I know Charbonnet ran like a low four, five at 214, but he's been consistently listed at like 220 throughout college was like 222 again at his pro day. So I think that's probably around where Charbonnet weighs or what he plays at is around the 220 mark. And so he's probably a little bit slower than that 453. Roshan is a 220, 225 type guy who runs mid high four fives. But both of these guys are tackle breaking machines. I just finished my film study on Roshan Johnson. I thought he was really impressive through contact and really impressive with the way that he was able to like fit through tight creases and just kind of like position himself in the backfield in ways that kind of like maximize Maximized gaining yardage, like given what was available on the play from his blockers. Like he he just knows where to be and can and can fit in tight creases where really only guys that, you know, like Deuce Vaughn, A Chain, Gibbs, Spears, you know, these other small running backs are like fitting through the, these small holes and don't require much of their offensive line. I thought Roshan Johnson, even as a big dude, showed some of that same ability. And Zach Charbonnet is just a beast. Similar to Bijan, he's one of the guys in this class who's able to run with a high level of finesse and a high level of power. I think Charbonnet is even more powerful than Bijan, a little bit less elusive than Bijan is, but he has a similar blend there. And both of these guys can contribute in the passing game. So these are guys that I think can both be three down backs, you know, depending on, on, you know, where they end up landing. And I think both of them could be pure two down backs as well in backfields that already have like established or, you know, kind of satellite backs who are more well suited to playing on third downs. But these guys have a, a fairly tight range of outcomes given that they can just do everything at a pretty good level. My next tier here is a one-man tier, and it is Tajay Spears. He's another guy kind of like Evans, where I could see him like jumping up and down these tiers. Speculatively, kind of, uh, what, what's the word that I'm looking for? It starts with an A. Aspirationally, <laughs> Spears could be up in that A-chain in Gibbs, in, in Gibbs territory. Uh, Spears is incredible out in space. He's got some Alvin Kamara to his game with the way that he's able to like dip his shoulder and like swing his hips and make these little subtle movements to like minimize contact and break away through tackles out in the open field. He's excellent there. And so the space ability he has gives him the same potential as a guy like, you know, A-Chain to catch swing passes and then turn them into 15 yard first downs by making one guy miss and just going. I'm a little less certain about his ability to run between the tackles as I am with a guy like A-Chain, more certain of that ability than with than with Gibbs. He's kind of like if you split the difference between A-Chain and Gibbs, minus the size or, or minus the speed from both of them, obviously. But as far as, you know, running ability and receiving skills, he kind of splits the difference on both of them. Isn't quite the receiver that Gibbs is, isn't quite the runner that A-Chain is, but kind of smash them together and make them slower. He's kind of like what we hoped Clyde edwards alaire would be. And so he could be like a Deion Lewis type that kind of jumps up a couple tiers here. Or I could see him being like a Michael Carter type who is an NFL contributor, but doesn't end up, you know, impacting fantasy teams very much. The next tier is two guys who I am fairly confident will be, or, or at least can be, like steady, reliable, two down grinders in the NFL. And that's Tyon Evans and Dwayne McBride. Evans is like 225, ran a low 4.5 in the 40 yard dash. We haven't, we haven't seen McBride test at all. Um, this offseason, but he's like 209, 215 pounds, um, depending on if you want to pay attention to the combine or what he was listed at at UAB the past couple of years. But I am just confident, given the way that these guys were able to produce on a per carry basis throughout college. McBride was just awesome on a per touch basis. You go to like the PFF guys on Twitter, every single you know chart they're tweeting out 
has Dwayne McBride at the top of all of the most predictive, you know, rushing efficiency metrics, whether that's uh, missed tackles forced or yards after contact per attempt or rushing yards over expected or explosive run, you know, explosive run rate. It was a lower level of competition for McBride, but he was absolutely dominating, like to a similar degree that Tajay Spears was dominating at. I don't think McBride's going to contribute in the passing game at all. He also has some fumbling issues, ball security issues, but if he can fix those, and that seems like a fairly fixable issue to me. I, I don't see why he couldn't be like a starting and or rotation level two down back in the NFL because he was really effective from an efficiency standpoint, from a data standpoint, and also really clean from a film standpoint. And then we've got Tyon Evans, who's just a bruiser. Uh, he's kind of like Zach Evans in the way that he doesn't run with a lot of wiggle, but he's he's thicker and he just bowls over people. He just breaks a ton of tackles. He's got an explosive first step and decent long speed. Uh, he was never a workhorse anywhere, but efficient at community college, efficient in the ACC, efficient in the SEC on a per carry basis. Everywhere he's been, he's just a super solid dude. Checks the speed score boxes, checks the weight boxes. Also not going to contribute in the passing game much, but I think he's a super solid two down runner. And that's what puts those guys above the next tier for me, which is made up of four guys in Izzy Abanacanda, Tank Bigsby, Kendra Miller, and Sean Tucker. Uh, I think it's probably widely accepted that these four guys are like more talented than the two guys that I have above them. Uh, maybe, maybe some of the guys that I have even further than that. And I... I don't necessarily disagree with that. I'm just more confident in the guys in tier six being like solidly able to run the ball at a competent level in the NFL than I am with the guys below them. But I also recognize that the guys in tier seven have probably higher ceilings, more three down potential than the guys in tier six do. So Izzy Abanacanda is a guy who is an explosive upright runner with workhorse size and fantastic athleticism, especially you know, his, his, his stop start burst. He's so fast, so explosive. You know, that first step when he sees a hole and goes, he just, you know, covers ground like that. The problem with him is that I'm not sure how good of a, a receiver he's going to be, but even as a two down runner, he doesn't, he doesn't run with a lot of wiggle. He doesn't run with a lot of power at all. He's just kind of like high and tight. And then when he gets, when he gets tackled, he goes down, you know, he falls forward, but he goes down because he's not, he's, he's not making those subtle movements to break away from defenders and throw off their angles. And for whatever reason, he's just not able to fight through contact beyond that. And as well, I don't think he's very creative behind the line of scrimmage. So he's a fairly situationally dependent guy in this class for me, but I see the potential in the right spot because he does have so many nice traits. Tank Bigsby stud as a freshman fell off the last couple of years. I'm open to the idea that he's like, was a Cam Akers type in college who was kind of like fighting for his life behind the line of scrimmage and had efficiency numbers that suffered as a result. But that is making excuses for him. Like I completely understand that. And so I, I have the the upside where he's like a Cam Akers, Miles Sanders type talent who can be like a, you know, a decent three down back in the NFL. And then there's the downside where he wasn't fighting for, he wasn't a talented player fighting for his life. He just like fell off the last couple of years and we shouldn't expect him to be anything. So wide range of outcomes for Tank Bigsby. Kendra Miller has been hurt this off season. We haven't seen testing numbers from him. Um, I know he was fast on the field. You know, uh, miles per hour tracking data indicates that he's pretty damn fast. To me, he's kind of, he's a patient runner, but beyond that, he is a pure tackle breaker. Everything that he creates is just fighting tooth and nail away from defenders, spinning away from them, dead legs, fighting for extra yards through contact. Just He just squeezes every extra inch after the point of contact on his runs. But before that, I don't think he's very good at navigating the line of scrimmage at all. And so I also think he's fairly situationally dependent, but he could be one of these Jamal Williams types who, who like fan bases just love because he runs so damn hard. And then we got Sean Tucker who might fall out of this range completely uh, due to maybe a heart condition that uh, might, you know, damage his, his NFL future period. But assuming the medicals come back clean and assuming that teams are not worried about him health-wise and assuming that, you know, he gets draft capital that kind of reflects that, I see him in a similar vein as a Banacanda, Bigsby, and Miller. Not, not as a player comp at all. These guys are all very different runners. But Bigsby just feels like a guy who you know, maybe is like a Tevin Coleman type. I don't see him as a strong kind of 1A runner. I view him as a strong 1B, but I don't think he's much of a factor in the passing game despite being funneled targets um, as like the whole offense there at Syracuse the last couple of years. But he's a, a sound decision maker behind the line of scrimmage, not powerful at all, doesn't run with a ton of wiggle, kind of like a Banacanda if a Banacanda was more grounded behind the line of scrimmage and was making better decisions and was 
smaller. <laughs> and my last tier here is two guys who are incredibly different, but similar to A-Chain and Gibbs in the way that they kind of arrive at similar uh, potential outcomes from very different vantage points. Chris Rodriguez of Kentucky and Deuce Vaughn of Kansas State are polar opposites as players. We, we know the story with Deuce Vaughn. He is a tiny dude who has really fun film, pretty solid athleticism, and probably elite pass catching skills. He has by far the, the least power, the least contact balance, the least ability to play through contact of any runner in this class based on what I've charted for him and for everybody else. Like he, you touch him and he basically goes down um, if you can get, you know, a couple good hands on him. But he is super elusive um, and a dynamic pass catcher. I could see him as a Tariq Cohen in the NFL, but I think that's his ceiling. And then Chris Rodriguez is not Benny Snell. He went to the same college, a uh, similar size, was much faster than Benny Snell by nearly two tenths of a second. He ran a low four five. Uh, after Benny Snell ran like mid-high four sixes. Um, they, they both didn't contribute in the passing game, but Chris Rodriguez was so much more efficient relative to the other backs at Kentucky when he was there than Benny Snell was during his time at Kentucky. Chris Rodriguez is just a much better prospect than Benny Snell. Um, he's a legitimately good two-down thumper in kind of the the Kevin Harris, like a healthy Kevin Harris from last season. I love Kevin Harris. And we're kind of getting to run that back with Chris Rodriguez, who's a fifth-year guy. But he can fit into this mold as a as a steady two down runner who just breaks a ton of tackles and you know produces positive outcomes on a consistent basis and that could be his avenue to like you know mid RB two level production where Deuce Vaughn could do the same thing from the opposite you know kind of path by just catching sixty five balls a year and you know scoring seven touchdowns or whatever so completely different players land in a similar spot for me but that is my top fifteen pre draft running back rankings and tiers. Before the NFL Draft, Bijan, A-Chain, Gibbs, Evans, I don't need to say them all, you know them. Uh, hit like and subscribe, I hope you liked the video, I don't know, catch me on Saturday in the middle of the NFL Draft, wonder what I'm going to talk about. Uh, peace.